In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather together this day with great joy as we ask God's blessing upon nine new deacons for our diocese, for the Church of Springfield, and indeed an enrichment of ministry in our church. We thank God that they have responded to this call to serve God's people and that we can gather here assured by the promise of Jesus that ministry would continue in his church until the end of time. Mis queridos amigos en Cristo, que alegría es estar aquí hoy para testimoniar el poder de Jesús resucitado en el trabajo en su iglesia en la ordenación de estos nueve hombres al diaconado. Nuestro Señor Provincio estar siempre con nosotros a través de su iglesia. Y en el sagrado rito de ordenación, vemos su promesa cumplida. Los invito a participar en vuestras oraciones, pidiendo primero perdón a Dios por nuestros pecados. Let us turn to God, seeking forgiveness for our sins. en el cielo y en la tierra paz. Gloria a Dios en el cielo y en la tierra paz. A los hombres que ama el Señor.
Gloria a Dios en el cielo y en la tierra paz. Gloria a Dios en el cielo y en la tierra paz. A los hombres que ama el Señor. to God in the highest glory to God glory to God in the highest glory to God and on earth peace to people of good will en el cielo y en la tierra paz. Gloria a Dios en el cielo y en la tierra paz. A los hombres que ama el cielo. Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these, your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, bring forward the tribe of Levi and appoint them as servants of Aaron the priest. They shall do the work required for the tent of my presence and perform duties for the priests and for the whole community. They shall take charge of all the equipment of the tent and perform the duties for the rest of the Israelites. The only responsibility the Levites have is to serve Aaron and his sons. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de los Ochos de los Apóstoles. En aquellos días, habiendo aumentado el número de los discípulos, los helenistas se quejaron contra los hebreos, porque sus viudas eran desatendidas en el servicio diario. Los doce reunieron la multitud de los discípulos y les dijeron, no es conveniente que descuidemos la palabra de Dios por el servicio de las veces. Por eso, busquen en entre ustedes a siete hombres de buena fama, llenos del Espíritu Santo y de la sabiduría, para confiarles este oficio. Nosotros nos dedicaremos a la oración y al ministerio de la palabra. Toda la asamblea estuvo de acuerdo y eligieron a Esteban, hombre lleno de fe y del Espíritu Santo, a Felipe, Procuro, Nicanor, Timón, Parmenes y a Nicolás, prosélito de Antioquía. Los presentaron a los apóstoles, quienes después de orar, les impusieron las manos. La palabra de Dios se difundía y el número de los discípulos en Jerusalén aumentaba considerablemente. Incluso un gran número de sacerdotes aceptaron la fe. Palabra de Dios.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a, per if a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborers deserve payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those be ordained deacon, please stand. David Bergeron, Jr. John Fox. Rodney Patton. David Picard. Jose Rivera. Lino San Miguel. Alberto Santiago Martinez, Gerald Salataro, Gilbert St. George Sorrell. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. After inquiring among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of diaconate. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. What we do here today is certainly countercultural. Our culture tells us to look out for ourselves, that each one is number one. And yet, what we do in the name of Jesus in his church is ordain these nine men as deacons in order to serve. 
And in the readings that we hear today, we realize that they are called to serve in looking out for the needs of others. As Jeremiah the prophet is called, he protests to God, I am too young. But God certainly gives to Jeremiah the hope that God will be with him, guiding him with his spirit and giving to him the words that Jeremiah needs to speak to God's people. Jeremiah needs to realize his inherent trust in the Lord God, to be able to prophesy to God's people and to bring to them the good news, the good news that God is with them. Jeremiah is called to look beyond his own limitations in order to reach out for God to his people, to allow his people to hear the good news that God never leaves them and is with them always. And so Jeremiah cannot be self-seeking, but rather he must look outward. We hear that too in the second reading. As the first deacons are chosen by the apostles, they're chosen for the ministry of charity, of looking out for the widows, for the poor, the marginalized, so that the apostles can carry on the word of God in the church. Those first deacons were called as men of service, as men who were to look outside of themselves to the Lord Jesus and to minister in Jesus' name. Indeed, in the gospel, as Jesus appoints those 72 to go forward to proclaim the kingdom of God, Jesus asked them to rely not on anything else, but solely on his word. Take no traveling bag or walking stick. Take only yourselves and the word that Jesus gives to them. And as they went out from there to proclaim the kingdom, they realized that their reliance was only on the Lord Jesus, the power of his word, and the call that he had given to them. Today, as we joyfully gather to celebrate this ordination, we realize that it is indeed countercultural, but it is a sign to our world that in the midst of self-seeking and selfishness, the call of the Lord Jesus asks us to look out for others and to help them transform their lives from looking inward to looking to the needs of others. This ordination, too, is that transformation of taking all that has been over these past few years of formation and allowing the power of the Lord Jesus through this grace of ordination to allow these deacons to be able to go out to minister with the works of charity, of preaching, and of bringing God's people closer to him. It is indeed a sign that our times truly needs, a sign that Jesus continues the work of ministry through his church and those whom he calls through sacred ordination to bring his presence to others. It is a sign that Jesus' life that was spent out for us in his own sacrifice, in his death and in his resurrection, gives to us the hallmark of what ministry is all about in looking out for the other as Jesus has looked out for each one of us. And so today, as we gather, we rejoice that God has called these nine men to the order of deacon. And we rejoice, too, that God calls each one of us as members of his church to be a people who truly bring Jesus' presence to others. 
as these men will do in ways of preaching and in sacraments and works of charity, so too do we in the witness of our lives by our works of charity and of prayer look out for the good of others. This call to ministry to our nine men who will be ordained today is also a reminder to us that we too carry the presence of Jesus to others. It is indeed a joy to gather with you this day to celebrate this wonderful rite of ordination and to show to the world that the power of Jesus' call is at work, is still as deep as it was when he sent those 72 to preach the good news and is as needed today as it was when Jesus himself walked the earth. Queridos hermanos y hermanas del Señor resucitado, hoy nos reunimos como pueblo de Dios para dar gracias por el llamado que se le da a estos nueve hombres en ordenación sagrada del orden del diácono. Nuestras lecturas hablan hoy de la, de la llamada de los primeros diáconos que debían ayudar a los apóstoles en el ciudadano de los pobres, los enfermos y los desciudados. Este llamamiento sigue siendo tan poder, poderoso hoy en el día, desafiando a nuestros hombres a seguir los pasos de los primeros diáconos. Jeremías, el profeta primero, protesta al Señor que es demasiado joven. Sin embargo, Dios la, la de, le da el llamado a hablar al pueblo de Israel. El Señor promete dar a Jeremías las palabras para hablar al pueblo, para que conozcan los caminos del Señor. En el Evangelio de hoy, de San Juan, Jesús promete a sus discípulos que participaran de una manera única en su ministerio, en la edificación del reino de Dios aquí en la tierra. Es esta promesa que nos reúne aquí hoy, gozosa en el llamado que Dios da a nuestros hermanos que están a punto de ser ordenados. Mis queridos hermanos y hermanas, comprometámonos a vivir una vida de oración y de servicio al ser testigos de esta ordenación hoy. Oremos por nuestros diáconos recién ordenados, por todos los sacerdotes y diáconos, y por el llamado del Señor al alcanzar muchos corazones para que puedan responder generosamente en servicio a Dios y a su pueblo a través de su iglesia. Beloved brothers and sisters, since these, our sons, who are your relatives and friends, are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priest in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity showing themselves to be servants to all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be their duty at the bishop's direction to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in holy doctrine. They will preside over public prayer administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. 
consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes down to us from the apostles and bound more closely to the service of the altar. They will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. With the help of God, they are to go about all these duties in such a way that you will recognize them as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. Now, dear sons, you are to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also should do. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God from the heart. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. Since by your own free choice you present yourselves for the order of the diaconate, you should be men of good reputation, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit, as were those once chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity. Adalberto and John you will exercise your ministry committed to celibacy, knowing that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as the source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compelled by the sincere love of Christ the Lord and living in this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily with an undivided heart, you will free yourselves more completely for the service of God and his people and minister more effectively in the works of spiritual rebirth. Whether or not you have been called to celibacy, be firmly rooted and grounded in the faith and show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and man, as is proper for ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's holy mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope that is offered by the gospel. Not only are you hearers of the gospel, but also its ministers. Hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this holy office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed, according to the gospel and the church's tradition. Amen. Alberto and John, are you prepared to embrace, embrace the celibate state? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and his people? Amen. Do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you also to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar?
Do you promise obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the graces of his blessings on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he will raise to the holy order of the diaconate. Please stand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us, Saint Michael, pray for us, holy angels of God, pray for us, Saint John the Baptist, pray for us, Saint Joseph, pray for us, Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. 
Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine, pray for us. Saint Teresa, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, save your people from all evil. Lord, save your people from every sin. Lord, save your people from everlasting death. Lord, save your by your coming as man, Lord, save your people. By your death and rising to new life, Lord, save your people. By your gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, save your people. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving a table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating him here on earth, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Heavenly Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with word and strengthen them, with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Amen. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant, <coughs> your servant Francis, our Pope, <clears throat> Mitchell, and Timothy, our bishops, with the whole order of bishops. These are your servants who have been ordained today as ministers for the church and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us please turn it off each other, the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now Lord.
Let's pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. I'm happy to give to each of our newly ordained deacons the letters, the official letters of their appointments. I know you read them in the morning paper this morning, but now this makes it official. Okay, Deacon Gill. Congratulations, thank you. Deacon Jose. Deacon Rodney. Deacon Dave Bergeron. Deacon John Fox. Deacon David Picard. Deacon Lino San Miguel. Deacon Adalberto Santiago Martinez. And Deacon Gerald Solitero. Let us congratulate these, our new year And as we conclude our Mass today, I would like to take this opportunity to thank your families, all of those who have supported you in this journey to the diaconate, to all of those who in formation have helped you, to Deacon Leo Coughlin, the director of our permanent deacon office, to Father Warren Savage, to Monsignor John Benzani, to all of those who serve as your teachers at the Elms College, uh, with whom you've gathered over these past years in classes and in sessions. I want to give thanks to for Bishop Tim McDonald for being with us today and helping us to celebrate this wonderful occasion in our diocese. To my brother priests and deacons who have come here in such large numbers to support you in this ordination and to pray for you on this very, very special day. To our men and women religious who are here in the cathedral in such numbers too, and to all who have served as master of ceremonies, to our choir and to the Knights of Columbus who have added such splendor to our occasion, we're grateful to all of them. And as we go forth from here joyfully, we seek God's guidance and blessing as we all continue on our way in service to him who gives to us the gift of faith and calls us to be brothers and sisters to one another. Now let us ask for God's blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, and especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word, to be its sincere and fervent witnesses, we pray. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his holy mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world, we pray. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.